Now let's answer some problems involving radical equations. Let's start with problem number one. So we have square root of x minus 9 equal to 2. Now the basic rule in solving for radical equation is to always isolate your radical expression. So in this case we are adding 9 on both sides leaving us with square root of x equal to 11. And to get rid of the square root, we're going to take the square of both sides and we'll end up with x equal to 121. Now, take note that every time you're working with a radical equation, not all solutions that you're going to find will fit as a solution of your equation. So you need to verify it all the time. So to verify it, we have square root of x minus 9 equal to 2 as the original equation. And we're going to replace it with our answer. And if it's equal to the other side of the equation, then that means your solution is correct. So we have 11 minus 9 is equal, uh, 11 minus 9 is equal to 2. So therefore, the solution that is x equal to 121 for this equation is a correct solution. Now let's try it out with problem number 3. So we have x So since we have a radical on this side of the equation and x minus 7 over here, we don't need to divide it because it's just going to make the equation more complicated. So what we're going to do is to square both sides and now we'll end up with x minus 7 times x minus 7 equals 2 squared times square root of x plus 1 squared. So by doing so, we're going to foil out the expansion. So x times x is x squared minus 7x minus 7x plus 49 equal to 4 times this cancelled out x plus 1. So from this equation, now we're going to um, simplify and equate this equation to 0. So we'll have x squared minus 14x plus 49 because we can combine this two right here and we'll have 4x plus 4 since we can distribute 4x to, to 4 to x plus 1. And now we're going to equate it to 0 by subtracting 4x here minus 4x over here minus 4 over here and minus 4 over here. So this will turn into 0 and this will also turn into 0 leaving us with x squared minus 18x plus 49 minus 4 is 45 equal to 0. And since we have a quadratic equation, to uh, complete your solution, you can either use the quadratic formula or you can factor this quadratic equation. Since this is a factorable quadratic equation, so we need to think of factors of positive 45 that when you add them up will equal to negative 18. So since it's negative 18, both of them should be negative. And the factors of 45 that will give you 18 when you add them up will be 3 and 15. Because 3 times 15 is 45 and when you add them up will be equal to negative 18. So our solution using the zero product property will be x minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 15 equal to 0. So we have x equal to 3 or x equal to 15. But the problem is we need to verify, I mean, the next challenge is to verify if both of them or only one of them is the solution of the equation. So since on problem number 3 we have x minus 7 equals 2 x plus 1, replacing it with 3, um, 3 minus 7 equals 2 times 3 plus 1. We have 2 times square root of 4, and we have 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. And we have 3 minus 7 is negative 4, so we know that negative 4 is not the same as 4, so this is not the solution. So let's verify it with 15. So 15 minus 7 equals 2 times 15 plus 1. So 15 minus 7 equals 2 times square root of 16. And 15 minus 7, let's simplify this first. So 2 times 4 and 2 times 4 is 8. And we know that 15 minus 7 is equal to 8. So therefore, 
x minus 15 is the solution of our radical equation. Just goes to show that when you're working with radical equations and you are getting two answers, make sure to verify if one of them or both of them are um, solutions of your radical equation. Now let's go ahead and answer problem number five. So some radical equations are easy to solve, some are a little bit complicated. So we have x equal to square root of x plus 7 plus 5. So since we have a constant with the radical expression, we're going to get rid of that. So we'll have x minus 5 equal to square root of x plus 7. And since we now have an isolated radical, we can undo the radical symbol or, or cancel the radical symbol by taking the power of the root which is square so we'll have x minus 5 x minus 5 equal to x plus 7 because this cancels out so uh, to foil binomial x times x is x squared and so on but we know that this is simply x squared minus negative 5 um, plus negative 5 is negative 10 x plus 25. So this is the expanded form of your binomial and by equating it to 0 so minus x minus x minus 7 minus 7 our new equation this will be 0 and this is also going to be 0 will be x squared minus 11x plus 25 minus 7 is 18. So we have x squared minus 11x plus 18. So once again, let's see if we can factor this out. Otherwise, you will use the quadratic formula to solve for x. So in this case, we have x and x. They have a negative here. So we have negative because this is positive. So the factors of 18, it could be 18 and 1. It could be 9 and 2. It could be uh, um, 3 and 6. And we know that 9 and 2 will fit the factor because negative 9 times negative 2 is positive 18 and negative 9 plus negative 2 is negative 11. So by zero product property, x minus 9 is equal to 0 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 9 and x is equal to 2. But we don't know yet if both of them are solutions. So let's verify it first. Let's start with 9. So since we have x equal to x plus 7 plus 5 so we have 9 equals 9 plus 7 plus 5 so 9 equals square root of 16 plus 5 and we have 4 plus 5 which is equal to 9 so this one is a verified solution of the radical equation now let's see if it's also true for 2 so we have 2 equals square root of 2 plus 7 e plus 5. So we have square root of 9 plus 5, which is 3 plus 5. And we know that 2 is not equal to 8. So that means x is equal to 9 is the only solution of the radical equation. So that's problem number 5. Now we have two more problems to work with so let's start uh, problem number seven and number seven we have another radical equation but this time we're not dealing with a square root we're dealing with a cube root of 2x plus 1 plus 5 equal to 0 and since the radical equation or expression is still with a constant we will get rid of that leaving us with 2x plus 1 equal to negative 5 and to undo the cube root we're going to take the cube of both sides cube of both sides so we'll have 2x plus 1 equals we know that negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 just showing it to you it will end up with a negative product or negative expansion so we'll have negative 1 25 because negative times negative is positive 25 and positive 25 times negative 5 is negative 125 so we have 2x plus 1 equal to negative 125 now to solve for x so 
So half of 126 is negative 63. So this is our solution and we don't need to verify it since um, we only have one for this equation. So let's go ahead and answer problem number nine, the last problem for today. So we have number nine. And in number nine, this is probably the most complicated equation that we're going to solve today. So we have square root of x minus three plus square root of x plus five equal to four. And when you encounter this type of radical equation, since you have two terms that are both, both inside the square root, you need to equate or separate the radicals so that they are both on the other side of the equation. So we'll have, or I'm going, what I'm gonna do is to subtract x plus five here, or square root of x plus five, so that this will turn to zero and I will be left with square root of x minus three equal to four minus x plus five. So when this happens, since we have two square roots on both sides, we're going to square this Notice that one of them is easier to evaluate because x minus 3 is inside the square root, so this will cancel out and we'll have x minus 3. Now the challenge is the expansion for 4 minus x plus 5 and 4 minus square root of x plus 5. So let's foil this out. So we'll have 4 times 4, which is 16. 4 times negative square root of x plus 5 is negative 4 square root of x plus 5. This and that is negative 4 square root of x plus 5. And square root and square root, and they are the same, is just positive x plus 5. So now we can combine these two terms over here because they are like terms. We'll have 16 minus 4 times 4 is 8. 8 square root of x plus 5 plus x plus 5 and we know this is equal to x minus 3 so now that we have this equation we're just going to uh, combine like terms and isolate the radical expression so to isolate it I'm going to combine 16 and 5 and 16 plus 5 is equal to 21 minus 8 square root of x plus 5 plus x equal to x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is to isolate my radical by subtracting x on both sides and subtracting 21 on both sides. Both of them will turn to 0 and this will also turn to 0 and we are left with negative 24. And now we have a more simpler form of the radical equation which we can easily solve because all we have to do is to do probably two more steps So x is equal to 4 for problem number 9. And if you want to verify if this is true, so we have square root of x minus 3 plus square root of x plus 5 equal to 4. So we know that this will turn into square root of 4 minus 3, which is 1. And this will turn into 4 plus 5, which is 9. And square root of 1 is 1, and square root of 9 is 3. And they are satisfying the equation. So this is how we solve radical equations in algebra.